I definitely found that Weber State gave me the skills and the knowledge I need to know to come out and to become a, a good paramedic. It's important to have hands-on and good instructors and I, I feel that Weber State has done that. They've really created an environment in the field rides and in the hospitals where you're, you're going to learn the skills, I believe, probably better than anywhere else. They put their heart into it. They put some time into making sure that the paramedics that come out of there know what they're doing and, and uh, have the skills to deal with the things that they're going to be given on the street. Did you have a seizure today? Did you take your medicine? The patient uh, actually had a history of seizures, but he also had a history of uh, drug abuse also. So uh, we had to distinguish between two. Uh, which uh, which one it was, and uh, we went from there uh, with the appropriate treatment. I can't imagine doing anything else. Um, I really enjoy getting involved in the call, and, uh, being involved from start to finish. You know, when we got there, both of them complained of some neck pain and some back pain. The driver was restrained, um, but said the passenger said she had a momentary loss of consciousness. Kind of a typical motor vehicle accident. You know, put them in full C-spine, vitals were good, they were pretty stable other than their, their pain. Um, and so both, both patients got transported. We got there and found out um, a four-year-old and his brother had been jumping on the bed and one fell off and broke his head. <laughs> he um, fell, hit the headboard and got a pretty nice lack, I'd say probably a three to four inch lack on the back of the head. But you know, a lot of people don't understand that your head has a lot of vessels and veins and it bleeds really good with even just a small cut. So I'm sure it freaked mom out, grandma and brother. And so they called us, but everything ended up being okay. He just is gonna go get some stitches and hopefully he won't jump on the bed anymore. Okay, well, nice to meet you. All right, we'll see you later, man. No more monkeys on the bed, eh? All right. From my point of view, I stand and watch the medical crews and we're like this compared to them. They hold life in their hands, you know. We're an integral part of that team for sure, but, you know, we can't do their job, they can't do ours, but they, they have the training and the power, if you ask me. It's pretty impressive to watch them you know, at work when things are dire, especially. Very impressive. Seventeen-year-old male, self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Has his whole life ahead of him, and you wonder what caused him to do it that he thought was so bad that he needed to take his own life for it. You know. Every call you get done, you still look at it and try and figure out: Could I done something better? You know, what did we do? Did we treat this right? Did we do that right? Everything worked right? You know, can I prove on something? Amazing what people can do to themselves that, uh, that get themselves hurt. It's amazing what uh, people can live through and then what minor things that can kill people. But uh, I guess mostly I've seen that uh, there, there is a real need and, and that uh, people are always doing something where they're going to need some help or in some place where they shouldn't be and, and they're going to need some outside assistance to take care of them. We were paged uh, early in the morning from our bed about midnight on a call of a 24-year-old female that had self-inflicted uh, lacerations on her arm. So stupid. All right. <laughs> really stupid. With a box cutter? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have any medical problems seeing a doctor or therapist or anything like that? I went to a therapist mm -hmm. for like a couple times, but it just like made me mad, so I didn't. Okay. Assessed her real quick, found there was no need for any medical care for her, and uh, released her to the police. Very simple.
How are you feeling right now? Feeling good. Okay. I finally told my mom everything that happened. Okay. Thank you. Bye. I absolutely feel like this is where I need to be. I, uh, you know, I have a hard time picturing myself being at any other job. How long has he been down? I got home about a half hour ago. And she, she was this way? This way. I've been working on her, trying to get the sugar mm -hmm. milk into her. Yeah, okay. do a This particular patient, having a history of um, diabetic problems, as soon as we give her that dextrose, she knows that her her sugar's up. She understands what happens. She doesn't want to go to the hospital. Um, and and it's not just her. It's a lot of patients you'll find. They don't want to be treated at the hospital. They want to take care of themselves. Another paramedic party. Another paramedic party? <laughs> so sorry, guys. Well, we heard you through the best parties. I don't know. I always get here late. You always get here late? <laughs> but it's the times where you, you see the recovery, um, a patient bounce back from devastation. That's when, that's what makes it worth it. This is the place to get IV practice. I mean, you'll do millions here. It's a place to get good. You draw a lot of tubes just in case they want to add on tessellator so we don't have to come back in and poke you, okay? Okay. Right now they'll probably only run just a couple. I think in any job you have a routine that you have to do throughout um, your work, but in an instant it can change and someone comes in and you just have to fly by the seat of your pants and do something that, that you haven't done in a long time or you've never done before. You have to think on your feet just to get the patient the care they need. There's a brain attack coming in, so a stroke, and I guess a trauma as well. I'm there to help them through their time and need, um, help them get better so that they don't feel like they need us anymore and they can go out and go about their daily life.